important thing with starting any organization is to make sure that um, the mission, the goals are very clear from the start and that the definition of the market, whether it's producer only, 80-20 rule, whatever it is, is very clearly outlined so that the farmers who are going to sign up to be as part of your market are very clear from the start what those guidelines are. And I think what we did as, as we looked at the market over the years is we saw some of the farmers changing so that you know we took another look at our rules. We actually set up an ad hoc committee group that was not part of the board to review that. Um, our board is representative of the communities where the farmers markets are. They always include growers. We now have three growers on our board. Um, so you have a diverse group that's really interested in the local food, the, the health issue, communicating, uh, good governments, um, good record keeping. And those are all the factors that weigh into deciding who ends up being on our board and serving. Uh, we like the farmers that serve on the board to be not just being territorial in their particular stand at the farmers market, but to be looking more comprehensively at how the organization is serving all of the farmers that are part of either fresh farm markets or the growers in that particular region. So you've got to um, balance all those kind of factors when you're looking at governance. You know, Green Market does not have its own independent board as being a part of, of Grow NYC. The Grow NYC board of directors oversees our work. But we do have a strong and active farmer and consumer advisory committee. And we meet monthly. We have various subcommittees, including a budget committee, a development committee, a rules committee. Some, when we need to, we'll, we'll set up special, special ad hoc committees. We have one right now that's looking at farm labor practices and, and proposed le legislation. We have one group that's working on good agric agriculture practices and what they would recommend for our, our program. And though it's not really direct oversight of, of green market staff, we work very closely with, with our community to make the decisions and, and to, to govern our work. Our market is a 501c3. Marketumbrella.org is the parent organization of our Crescent City Farmers Markets. Um, previously, our market was housed in Loyola University. Um, so in both cases, our mission has been largely education-based. At marketumbrella.org, we develop tools and resources for farmers markets. These are things that we test drive in our markets. We use the Crescent City Farmers Market as our laboratory to develop these tools and these programs, see how they work, see if they're replicable, and if so, share them with other markets. So our 501c3 status um, is, is tied to As a 501c3, you're expected to have a board. And you look at that board and you say, what do you want that board to, how, how, who, who do you want represented in, on that board? And I think what Bernie and I did is look at that and we said, okay, well, we've got all these different constituencies. We certainly have the farmers and producers. We have people from the communities where we have our markets. We have, um, we also have chefs who are an important part of our community. And then we, we have uh, uh, shoppers who love the markets. And so in our, we now have a 12-person board and we have a constituency. Each constituency is now represented. We have a management team for our markets. It's comprised of market vendors who are elected. They serve two-year terms, um, one per category. So we have three representatives from our vendor base on the management team, also market volunteers, um, market chefs who shop with us a lot, um, and market staff. So we've tried to make that management team as representative of the market community as possible. Mm -hmm.